Uh, Psalm 54, the, the uh, title before it says, uh, to the chief musician on Negaloth, Mask Hill, a Psalm of David, when the Ziphites came and said to Saul, doth not David hide himself, notice these words, with us, with us. All right, keeping your place there, because we'll come back. <clears throat> we need to read the historical account, and that is found in 1 Samuel, what? 23.19. I heard you say that a while ago, and I went, either that's a coincidence or the man is way <laughs> Well, apparently it's working. <laughs> it's working for you. Yeah, amen. 23.19, 1 Samuel. Um... Then came up the Ziphites to Saul at Gibeah, saying, Doth not David hide himself with us in strongholds, in the forest, in the hills of Hashathla, which is on the south side of Jeshimon? Jeshimon. <clears throat> and then uh, let's uh, drop down to verse 29. And David went up from there and dwelt in the strongholds of En Gedi, um, and let's see, let me just double check. I think there's another reference here. Yeah, look at 1 Samuel 26, 1. Now, this is almost the same thing that the other one said, and that also says it in, uh, partially in Psalm 54. And the Ziphites came unto Saul to Gibeon, saying, Doth not David hide himself in the hill of Hashelah, which is before Jeshimon? Then Saul rose and went down to the wilderness of Ziph. The wilderness of Ziph, by the way, is where the Ziphites dwell. Um, having 3,000 chosen men of Israel with him to seek David in the wilderness of Ziph. So if the if the wilderness of Ziph is where the Ziphites stay, what was the country that the Huns were from? Hungary. Actually, actually, that was the land that was given to them. That has absolutely nothing to do with this class, but <laughs> I found it out recently, and I thought, well, that is interesting, that, that, that name. I never would have guessed that. <clears throat> All right, let's just... So we don't waste too much time here. Let's go ahead and go to Psalm 54, very short, seven verses. And um, um, <clears throat> now one thing that you need to realize is the Ziphites were actually men of David's own tribe. They were men of Judah. And um, <clears throat> they were supposed to be not enemies, right? but those who love you and those that you expect to stand with you. Okay, so when that doesn't happen, what's it called? Betrayal. Like when an enemy does it, it's not called betrayal. <laughs> right, right. It, it's, it's called mean people. <laughs> but, uh, but when those that you love and those that expect to stand with you do that, <clears throat> you feel betrayed. You know... Let me just give you a little advice on that. <clears throat> if Christ is your life and Judas betrayed Jesus, somebody's going to betray Jesus in you. Okay? Now, I just want you to know that because it, there's a, you know, I would say, well, glory to God if it never happens. But I'll also tell you there's a very good chance that it's going to happen. And, and, and so I'm going to give you a little piece of advice here. <clears throat> um, don't put all your eggs in the basket of those who you would think would be with you. Uh, and not only that, but don't discount outsiders that you would never dream would be with you. <clears throat> I'm, I'm thinking of anybody remember Barzilla when, uh, when uh, 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 David was driven out of Jerusalem by Absalom. And Barzilla and, these, and his whole band of guys that weren't even Israelites came and joined David. What happened was they came to join David in Israel, and they showed up on the day he's leaving, being driven out. And, and they, 
And David said, look, this isn't your business. You don't need to. We're on the run. Stuff's bad. You don't have to go through all this with us. And he said, I forget. There was some precious work. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He, he, he spoke so highly of David. And just said, look, this is where we, we didn't come to, it was almost like we didn't come to be at Jerusalem. We came to be with you. And David's going, I don't even believe this, you know, because major people that had looked like they were with him turned at the first instant that, that something bad happened. But here are strangers that you would think have absolutely no reason to stand with you, and they will. So uh, let's just break it down into practical reality. And practical reality is if you put all of your eggs in the basket of people that you think that are going to be with you, you're going to be deeply hurt because some of those people are not going to be with you and will turn on you, okay? <clears throat> However, trust the Lord because God is patient and kind and uh, and provides in places that you would never expect if for no other reason to show us that he really is in control and you're not just trusting in man amen <clears throat> all right so um and there is this fact too we all say that jesus is our only source You know, God's going to test you on that. And he's going to put situ situations just like this one in play uh, so that we can eventually learn to live true. And I've used an example of that before. But there was a time, and I, I don't get into the whole thing, but there was a time that I was really going through some bad stuff and it seemed like a lot of people were turning on me and a certain group of reputable people offered you know a friendly hand and the problem honestly wasn't them the problem was me because I needed somebody and the somebody I really needed was the Lord but I was looking for a source other than the Lord I want you all to listen because this is true stuff and you don't have to understand it in my life, but you need to listen because it, there's a chance it'll happen in your life. <clears throat> God set the whole thing up. He set the whole thing up just so I'd get in and feel good and feel better and all this kind of stuff, only to pull the rug out from under me so that I would re rely completely upon the Lord and learn a really big lesson in one fell swoop, you know? And honestly, I'm going to tell you honestly, it was worth it. At the time, it was hard, but it was really worth it because it put me on a whole new keel with the Lord that I believe has, has kept me to a certain degree all this amount of time. So just, you know, just giving you these practical things. Now, the... The thing about the Ziphites is that they lived, you know, here they are. They, they're David's people. They're from Judah, and they turn him in to Saul. Um, they lived three miles from Hebron. Anybody know what Hebron means? What? No. Who, what'd you say? Fellowship. Fellowship. Hebron means fellowship. They didn't live in fellowship. They lived three miles outside of it. They were close, but they weren't in it. They weren't in fellowship. And so they ended up turning on David. And um, so let's look at verse 1. Save me, O God, by thy name, and judge me by thy strength. This, that's save me, O God, by thy name. Uh, I think that that's not just saying, save me. I think he's saying, save me by your name. And I think what he's saying is, we're married. We're one. We're one. You understand? I mean, because one is more important than being married. 
we are one, save me by thy name. In other words, save me by oneness. You know? And let me tell you, oneness again is going to be your best friend through many kinds of enemies and many problems. It's going to get you out of many situations. And the word save me here really is the word uh, vindicate me with your strength, because I'm not going to use mine. Um, uh, I won't turn my strength against my enemies. And then verse uh, 2, Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to the words of my mouth. Hear my heart cry. Couldn't you say that? Because he's not just playing at this. His, the ones that he trusted in turned on him. Hear my heart cry, for I turn unto you for help, and I don't turn to the arm of flesh. Now remember, David had a, a small army. <laughs> and he could have gone right down there and wiped them out. Save me, O oh God, by your strength. I'm not using my strength to vindicate me. Verse 3, For strangers are risen up against me, and oppressors seek after my soul. They have not set God before them. Okay. Who are these strangers and these oppressors? Uh, they're the Ziphites. They're not strangers. Oh, they seem very strange now. They don't seem like Judah at all. And so they have taken themselves out of being what was of God, and they've made themselves stranger. And, and the truth is the word strangers means arrogant or insolent. Um, <clears throat> at those who should know God, those who should be able to discern his chosen, which was David, uh, they actually become oppressors of what is of God. And, and let me just say this too. The last class we taught was along this same line. And many of the classes we taught have been along this same line. You know why? Because it's the soapbox I choose to be on. No. Because it's pretty much what the Psalms are about. And God chose this to be the word of God because you're going to go through stuff and he wants you to go through victoriously. He wants you to go through, and when I say victoriously, I don't mean all enemies defeated and you're walking around and they all look like idiots, but you look like you're really of God. Victorious is that you're with the Lord all the way through it and you don't start relying on other things. It's that simple. I mean, you know, you can, we can make it more difficult but it gets right down to i'm going to trust the lord and be with the lord and i'm not going to depend on my own strength <clears throat> all right so um verse uh, well the end of verse three is they have not set god before them now this is david and david remember is not just a military man and and in a sense he's not a priest but everything he's doing he's trying to put the lord in it He's, he believes that God set him up as king. And he believes that these outcasts are the ones that God gave him to help form and to flow together to bring forth what God wants in the earth. He believes that. And he believes the only way to accomplish that is to set God before his face and before their face. So what other response would he have when he sees those of Judah who are going against the Lord's anointed. And when we say that, we're not talking about a person that's specially chosen. We're talking about God choosing someone and you not agreeing with it. You know. Um, and he looks at that and he goes, these guys have not put God in there before them. They're not looking into the face of the Lord. They're not. They're just trying. You know what? They might even be trying to do the right thing. But that's different than putting God before your face. Can I get amen? So the knowledge of good and evil is different than the tree of life. <laughs> Can I say it any more clearer? And they're going by trying to figure out what's right and what's wrong. You're already messed up if you start from that point. You're already messed up. You're already messy. You'll never, even if you choose the right one, you're wrong because you got there by the wrong method. The tree of life is the way to go. Set God before your face. 
And then uh, <clears throat> verse 4, Behold, God is mine helper. The Lord is with them that uphold my soul. Because he's saying, these guys are not upholding me, and I know the Lord is with me. He's my helper. So the Lord is with those who are helping me. Yes. And to worship through, you know, not doing things in his own strength, but letting the Father raise him up and lift him up in the face of his enemies, in the face of those crucifying him, betraying him. You know, it's really the sufferings of Christ because he's responding with a cross attitude. Right. And that is denying your own strength and trusting in him to raise you up if that so be the victory that he chooses. Well, don't, don't you also, don't y'all think it interesting that David, when he was, you know, he had... By this time, I think he had 600 men. Um, that seems like a lot, but, you know, in light of the whole of the full kingdom of Israel, it's, you know, millions and millions. That's not very much. <clears throat> but David did not use what little strength he had to, to do certain things, to manipulate or to use power to get his way. He didn't do that. And don't you think it's interesting that for all those years that he learned not to, because it's one thing to learn the, the teaching of it, it's another thing to get in that situation and learn not to. I have learned, what did Paul say? I have learned. It didn't come naturally and I didn't have it automatically. I've learned that in whatever state I find myself therein to be content. Man, that's, that's a process. That doesn't happen overnight. But God was making a king. God was making a king. He wasn't king yet, but he was making a king, and he was making kingly decisions, and he was, he was lining up with the Lord. So, why? And here's my point. So that when he did have the power, he wouldn't use it for selfish reasons. He would still depend on the Lord. And the glorious thing is, basically he did. Now, again... Does David make mistakes? Does, uh, you know, yeah, he does. But he has a heart after God, despite his failures. And everybody but Jesus did fail. But when your heart is after God, your failures, you, let me, let me, let me just say this to you also. You know the problems that you're having right now, those, those, those personal struggles that you can't seem to get over or whatever, a couple of years from now, you'll have a whole new set. Those will be gone. You won't even remember them. You, you really won't. You'll go, you know, somebody will bring up, well, you remember years ago when you were, or you'll read in one of your journals, you know, about, you know, this, da, 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 and you're going, dude, I haven't thought about that in a long time. The Lord really did help. The Lord cleared that up. But you're still crying out to God for your present need, right? Well, that's what happens with those who have a heart after God. Stuff gets put behind, you know. I mean, with every step, you know, Jesus says, come unto me. With every step you go to him, there's something you're leaving behind. The goal isn't to leave stuff behind. The goal is to come unto Jesus. And as you do, you will find more and more stuff going. And that's the situation with, with David. <clears throat> um, David has a heart after God. He holds God before his eyes. Even now, even in contrast to these other people's action, the Ziphites. <clears throat> and so let's go ahead to, to verse 5 because I'm really wanting to just go ahead and move on and get this over with. He shall reward evil unto mine enemies. Cut them off in thy truth. All right. He's going to reward them. He's Wow, he's going to cut them off. But notice, he's not just going to cut them off. He's going to cut them off in his truth. That's different. Uh, they have earned their reward. That's going to happen. But to cut them off is to circumcise. They're not cut off because they're bad. They're cut off because of God's truth. Because they are the flesh. 
you know, you can get deeper into all of that and stuff. You know, they're the flesh that covers the head, which represents Christ and all that stuff. But the whole point is, is that they are cut off in his truth. And his truth says, uh, this is, you know, when God was making covenant with Abraham, he never asked anything of him until one day he said, this, look, this is my covenant that you must keep you and your seed after you all the days. And he says, circumcision. He brings up circumcision at that time. And he says, all I want is that the flesh be cut off. Well, he's the one that brought about the cross, amen? That cut off the flesh. He's the one that brought about that. A, and the covenant was, every man child shall be circumcised on the eighth day. Well, I got news for you. An eight-year-old cannot circumcise himself. Somebody else has to do that for you. Even though it's a requirement of God, I'm only eight. I'm sorry, eight days old. What did I say? Eight years old? Sorry. Eight days old. An eight-day-old child cannot circumcise himself. And, you know, and he can sit there and go, oh, the pressure. I'm only eight days old and I'm required already to get rid of my flesh. How can I can do this? I can't do it. Why do you put all this stuff on me, God? And the Lord says, I know you can't do it. The Father has to do it. But the flesh will be cut off. The flesh will be cut off. So, you know, you, you know, this portion of the body can say, well, I'm of the body. I'm of Judah. God says, yeah, but you're the flesh, you're the flesh part that is covering and you are the flesh part that according to my truth must be cut off not again not because you're bad but because of the truth and then verse uh, <clears throat> six i will freely sacrifice now again contrast time david says i will sacrifice but they will live for themselves <laughs> I will sacrifice. It's a powerful statement in light of this whole attitude thing, in light of the way that we carry ourselves. I have, we, we have been told, I will not sacrifice. I will not live a life of sacrifice. Folks, I'm, I'm just as sorry as I can be. I didn't make it up. Jesus said, except you deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me, you cannot even be my disciple. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I quote what he says. Sacrifice is a part of the whole ball game. It is the whole system of the old covenant, which was a shadow, was a picture of sacrifice. The main work that God did for you was he sacrificed his son. Everybody came into the kingdom of God by sacrifice. Everybody gets everything that they get by sacrifice. You don't get it any other way. But some people say to me, I don't want to sacrifice. I don't want to live this way. I want to live in a manner that I get what I want in this life. Well, the Lord says, let them alone. Let them have, they'll, you know, their reward is in this life. Let them alone. Get, they'll, you know, let them enjoy that and all that. Yes, uh, Carol? Uh, Sacrifice the black. Yeah. Let him yeah. go. Whereas sacrifice actually is life. <laughs> and well said. Mm -hmm. Sacrifice is not lack, it's life. But it's a choice. they have to see that. Yeah. You have to see that. But that is the truth. That is the truth. And I was thinking about this a few days ago. I was thinking how incredibly blessed my life has, has been. I mean, I mean, really, it re really has. Okay. You talk about your life in this world. I like the house we're in. It's a nice house. Let's see, I like my pickup truck. I like my pickup truck. I really do. I like my dog. My dog, Rocky, is none of you have seen him for, for a while now. He's not a year old yet. When you say sit, he sits. When you say wait, he waits. When you say here, he comes. When you walk down the road, he walks with you. When he's the best stinking dog a man can have. I like my dog, 
okay? Um, I, like, I like my Bible. I like my Bible cover. I like my camera. I like my guitar, my electric guitar, one of the best that you could ever find. The Tom Anderson, several thousand dollar guitar. The amp I have is incredible. Honestly, I'm not just saying this. This is a cheapo that I use compared to the one that I own. I've got an incredible amp that makes me sound good. People think I'm good when it's the amp and the guitar. I have a Martin acoustic guitar. I have, you know, I have a laptop that is one of the top of the line HD laptops. I've had it for years. I got it at the front end of everything when HD and all that was coming. And I've, it's got incredible amount of RAM and hard drive and uh, I mean, I can go on and on. I mean, honestly, I have more than a lot of people and I haven't even <laughs> been thinking about it. I had to sort of wake up and go, doggone it, I've just got a lot of good stuff from my father. I'm just blessed. Now, do I have any money in my pocket? No. <laughs> but I don't really, I'm not needing it. It's not about money, you know? So, I mean, I can just go on and on and on here, uh, but, but it is true. I, no good thing will he withhold from them that walk upright. I think that there, that does, I mean, he says, you know, um, if you give up houses and this and that, and you shall be given. I mean, I remember several years ago, I gave up, I'll give you a little secret right now. Several years ago, I gave my daughters because they lead worship so beautifully and bring the Lord in worship. I gave them my two top acoustic guitars. I gave Nisi my Gibson, which she remembered that I've been playing since she was a little girl, and she always loved that guitar, and I loved giving it to her. And I gave Cassie, before she was married to Ben, and Ben claimed it as his, the guild that he loves and she loves. And, and I gave it away, and, and uh, Mike Gentry said to me, well, I'm going to get you. And he got me this little cheap white guitar. But it was, he said, I can't stand to think of you not having an acoustic guitar. So he got me this little cheap, and he says, man, giving stuff away like that, I can't imagine what you're going to end up with. Okay, this is a little secret. I actually have two acoustic Martin guitars. Two Martin guitars, okay? <clears throat> God, our Father, is good. He takes care of us. But in that process, folks, there, there's sacrifice. Sometimes you give up the guitars you really like, or sometimes you give up the home you really like, or some, am I right or wrong? I mean, sometimes you do, but you do it for the Lord, and you don't do it in pain and agony. You do it to the glory of God, and you live to the glory of God. And, and even when it's not all coming in at the very moment that you think it should, he's faithful, and he will take care of you. And you build up, you, you know, you're building up all this stuff by sowing. You, there is a reaping. I, you know, I'm not against these guys that teach sowing and reaping. I'm just against material things being the, the main focus of all that. <clears throat> anyway, sorry, because I said this class is going to be short, so I'm going to see. We can't afford to let the Holy Spirit take over here. Yes, finish, Kelly. In verse 6, where it says, I will freely sacrifice unto thee. I was just thinking that with the Ziphites doing that to him and stuff, it a lot of time makes an uh, excuse for us to retaliate in like kind. Mm -hmm. And instead of remaining in the spirit of the Lamb, yes. we respond, uh, we feel constrained, not free to sacrifice anymore, but constrained to defend ourselves or, you know, say something or do something or, you know, the flesh is so sneaky, it can justify all kinds of... Um, it can sanctify wicked reactions because they seem just. And yet David says, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna remain in a, in a sacrificial way with the Father. I'm not gonna leave that place because they because they're acting this way, I'm not gonna be acting like kind. And I just think that is a kingly, that is a governmental, that is the beginning of really letting Christ be formed. To say, wait, I'm not gonna leave the way of the Lamb just because I have the right to, because of the right. way people treat me. Right. And that's practical. That's sure. in our lives every day. Amen. Well, you know, David's, David's saying, I will sacrifice. That's what he's saying right here. But you know what? He can't just, he can't just go up to the tabernacle. 
Remember where he's at? He's on the run from Saul. What do you mean you sacrifice? You're not going up there and offering all this kind of stuff. He's figured out the true sacrifices of God. Broken spirit, broken and contrite heart. To be in such a state where you won't, you know, revile back when you are reviled. That you won't, uh, uh, you know, hurt someone or do this or that or something to somebody. That you won't use what little power you've got or what lot power that you've got to make sure you get your own way and stuff like that. I will sacrifice. And all those people are in that tabernacle sacrificing animals. And David's saying, I'm sacrificing my rights. Hallelujah. <clears throat> all right, we're almost done here. Um, verse uh, 7, last verse. For he hath delivered me out of all trouble, and mine eye hath seen his desire upon his enemies. And so... Um, Notice he says God delivered him out of, not from. Because resurrection is the true deliverance. Where you're raised up out of it. Uh, and resurrection is assured long before it happens if there's been a sacrifice. You know, I mean. <laughs> Glory to God, folks. There is an assured resurrection if there has been a sacrifice. And... Uh, and that's, that's what we call assurance. I know that many in the church talk about assurance, and they say, oh, well, I have assurance that I'll be saved someday. So like if you're, if you're uh, 17 and you're having assurance, let's see, uh, the, the lifespan by the time you hit you know, so-and-so, your lifespan will probably be 85 you know, by that time, or 90, or Deb's father's 93 right now, 94. So uh, let's see, that's uh, you know, 85 years from now, you'll have assurance. But you can have assurance right now by sacrificing, you can be assured that resurrection will come. And we're not talking about someday in the sweet by and by. Um, so I, I wrote this all are brought to the cross but the enemy shall not rise from it for they are not one in his death they are not one with him in his death he is simply a substitute listen carefully because this is taught so much in churches that Jesus is a substitute and he is a substitute. But him being a substitute does not make you one. Him being a substitute might be good for going into death so that you don't have to die. But there's another side to it. If you're not one in his death, guess what? You're not coming up in his resurrection. So there has to be more than Christ the substitute for us. There has to be an identification into Christ and therefore into his death and whoopee, into his resurrection, amen? If we have been buried in the, in, in the, into the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection, Romans 6, 4. <clears throat> All right, so that's it. I do want to say I am really glad this psalm class is over. I feel like I've been teaching psalms for years now. And uh, I do look forward to the next semester, but I'm not sure yet what I'm going to be sharing. But thank you all very much for your attention and attentiveness and uh, your hunger for the Lord. And y'all can shut the.